Many thanks to the people who left comments yesterday. There were some really useful suggestions and general feedback. I really appreciate the time you spent doing that. And now let's get on to the next video. Remembering new information is always a problem and different people have different ways of remembering things. So just use whatever method is best for you. But bear in mind that the worst way to remember is just to read something, just read something off the screen or in a book. The best way is to teach. Personally, I find that um, it's much better for me if I write something down, my brain sort of remembers what's, what my eyes see, what's written on the paper, and also the movement of my hands as I write something. So that's something that works well for me, but it might be different for you. So just, just do whatever's best for you. The entire system of rote learning gets a bad rap generally, and that's quite justified. When, when you're teaching subjects that require critical thinking, and you're not teaching students how to think critically, you're just teaching them how to remember things, that's plainly wrong. But rote learning does have a place. When, when I first started school many years ago, I learnt my times tables and basic spelling by rote learning. If you just need to get information into your head, rote, rote learning works well. And in Thailand, they sell books for kids, uh, which every page is like this with a, a different character on. And the child just traces the dots to get the shape of the character. And these work really well. I bought some for myself when I started learning. And that's how I, I learned to write the Thai characters. And it really helped me to remember them as well. So I would, I would recommend these highly. And they're very, very cheap in Thailand. In this video, I'll introduce one new consonant and one new vowel, do a bit of theory, and then finish up by looking at some real world examples. The, the consonant is this one. It's called ba pla and the sound it makes is like a cross between a B and a P. You don't need to remember, remember the names of the consonants, but I, I do think it helps. And Thai is superior phonetically to English because in English, the same consonants can make different sounds in different words. So for example, if you um, put your hand in front of your mouth and say the word pit, you will feel a puff of air because the P in pit is aspirated. If you do the same thing and say super, the second syllable of super uses an unaspirated P, so you don't feel that puff of air. Now in English, we use the same consonants, but they make different sounds. Thai has different consonants for the aspirated sounds and the non-aspirated sounds, so it's far better. Here's the first word I want to look at, and what you'll notice is it has the, the sara it vowel, that I vowel, and there's the consonant that we just did, bo bla. And this final consonant is do de. Now in the previous video, we, we, we came across this consonant, but it was an initial consonant. And as I said then, with some Thai consonants, they change sound depending on whether they're an initial or final consonant. So as an initial consonant, it make, this makes a D sound. As a final consonant, it makes an, an unreleased T sound. And what I mean by unreleased is that if we if we say the English word pit, it's almost two syllables, it's pit. And with Thai, we don't release that final part. So what we've got is the initial consonant is that sort of cross between a, a B and a P. Uh, the I vowel, um, the final consonant is the unreleased T. And it's pronounced something like pit. It's a very, a very short sound and it means closed. Here's the next word, and it looks quite similar to the previous word, apart from the fact it has an extra vowel at the front. And what we have here is a, a vowel combination. So this vowel is written before the consonant, this one is written above the consonant, and together they make an er uh sound. And this highlights another problem with transliteration. There are so many problems. Uh, Thai words are transliterated into like the um, Roman alphabet, 
but it depends where you come from as to how you interpret the sounds and to an English speaker uh, this sound would be like an ER but to a German speaker it's like um, an umlaut O and if you haven't got any umlaut characters on your keyboard you just follow the vowel with an E so when a German speaker sees O E they know that the sound is er uh, like an umlaut O but that isn't the case with English speakers. It's not clear what an OE sound is. And that's a problem I had. And I've come across lots of evidence in the past that there was a lot of input from German speakers when the transliteration system was devised. Thing, things make sense to German speakers that don't make sense to English speakers. But when, when you see these two vowels in a combination you just need to know that the sound they make is an er uh. so what we have is that that bp initial consonant then the er uh vowel and then the unreleased t and it's got a low tone it, it sounds something like bird and what it means is open Here's a real world example of that vowel combination. It's a um, street name. So at the front, soe, which is just like a small alleyway. And uh, one of the, another problem, yet another problem with transliteration, is the inconsistency. So what you will see here is that this character here is called George Ann, makes a J sound. And it's been transliterated as a, a J here. But there's another one, a bit further along, exactly the same uh, consonant, George Ann, but here it's been transliterated as CH. So why is it J here and CH here? It's just no reason, but that's just typical of transliteration. And here is that vowel combination. So we've got the, the Sara A here and the Sara E here. And it's been transliterated, as you can see, as OE, you know, which, which is um, version that makes sense to German speakers but doesn't make much sense to English speakers. Here's a real world example that uses both of those words. The font is a bit unusual but this is this is quite normal as I, as I sort of said before. Once you learn the basics from books you then have to get used to reading the, the strange fonts that are used in the real world. So here we've got Bert, or open, uh, bad mong chow. So Chow is, is morning, so it opens wherever this place is at 8 o'clock in the morning and bit closes. Hog mong yen. Yen is evening, so it closes at 6 in the, in the evening. It's just telling you the um, hours of operation for whatever this place is. Here's another real life example. Uh, this place, Hong, Hong is room, Borigan service. But uh, this is a, a word that seems to have lots of meanings in Thai. It means like to leave or deposit. And some part up is baggage. So if you want to uh, leave your baggage somewhere, you can leave it here. And underneath, but open from 5 in the morning to um, 8 in the evening. Just one more real life example. And here we have some Thai modern art. It's either that or a, a spider has got some paint on it and walked all over the paper. Um, the top line you should see the word but open and the bottom line says prongni which is tomorrow. So whatever this place is, it's closed today but it will be open tomorrow. Let me know what you think. If you have any comments, questions or other feedback, leave them below. What I'm really trying to ascertain is whether these things are useful or not. If they're useful, I don't mind doing some more. If they're not useful to anyone, I have better ways to spend my time. Anyway, thanks for watching and hopefully more videos soon.